Hey guys, okay, so we're gonna do chapter 32 on animal diversity, and Annie's gonna go first. Okay, so my section was 32.1, and um, our first thing that we're gonna talk about is plants, fungi, and animals, and how they get their food and stuff. And plants are autotrophic eukaryotes, and they are capable of generation organic molecules to photosynthesis. So they basically just get their food by photosynthesis. And fungi are heterotrophs that grow on or near the food and they just absorb it like absorb it and then animals they ingest them by just like eating them because like we can't produce our own foods so we have to uh, I don't know get it by eating and stuff so then um, animals uh, they lack a cell wall so to get them like held up and stuff they are held together by proteins and basically it's just collagen and um, they have two types of cells muscle and nerve cell and they are the reason why we move and why we have nerve impulses and all that stuff so that's why that's pretty important uh, reproduction and development <clears throat> most animals reproduce sexually which is just a sperm and an egg and they fertilize and then they make a zygote from then the cycle goes into cleavage and then um, then it leads to blastula then it goes to gastrulation and then it goes and then the result of it is blast grass grastula, grastula gra whatever um, uh, some animals they also need one larva stage which is a sexually immature stage I guess and it's when they're not completely adults but they're not a child either they're not like young you know it's just like a right in team but they don't really look like like if you compare the kid and the <coughs> adult they don't look nothing the same so it's just I guess it's a transition stage again transition stage um, so then um, yeah and then from that larva eventually goes to metamorphosis then our next thing is homeoboxes and hoxing so although like animals vary more phylogeny, the <laughs> genetic network that controls animal development are very similar. All eukaryotes have the genes that regular, regulate the expression of other genes and they contain common DNA sequences called homeoboxes and animals share a unique homeobox containing family of genes called hox genes. And the hox genes play an important role in development of animal embryos, controlling hundreds of other genes that influence animal morphology. <clears throat> so, I'm done. Okay, so this, the next section is mine. So it's 33.32.2. And 32, chapter 30, section 32.2 is just talking about, like, eras and, like, how life, or animal life became so like the first ever era was the Neoproterozoic era which was a uh, 1 billion to 542 million years ago and early origins of animal fossils records date from 500 to 565 to 550 million years ago the Neoproterozoic era <coughs> have rocks that yield to be <laughs> microscopic signs of early animals. Bless you. Thanks. Bless you. And the next era is Paleozoic era. With this era is when animal diversity accelerates and the diversity is called the animal diversity accelerates is called Cambrian explosion. This explosion scientists have many hypotheses how this came about. The first hypothesis is new predator-prey relationship, relationship generated, and two, the second hypothesis is diversity through natural selection, and the third hypothesis is evolution of the Hox gene complex. And then the the last two eras are Mesozoic and Cenozoic era. Mesozoic era is from 251 to 655 million years ago. And this is when animal phyla evolved into ecological habitats and large and large and small dinosaurs emerged. When Cenozoic era came, that was from 65.5 million years ago to now, mass extinction of both terrestrial and marine animals 
like, died, basically, like, species disappeared, which were large non-flying dinosaurs and marine reptiles. So, and then after that, global climate cooled. So, yeah, that's my section, and now it's Jones. Mm, okay, so this is uh, 32.3. Um, this section talks about um, how animals develop and how they're categorized. So all animals are categorized into like different categories, <coughs> like according to the symmetry of their bodies. Uh, for example, there's radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. Uh, a bilateral animal has a dorsal, which is a top, a ventral, which is the bottom, a left, and right side, and they're all symmetrical, like the top and the bottom are symmetrical, and the left and the right are symmetrical. And in radial symmetry, it's when the object doesn't have a left or right side. So basically, every single side is kind of like symmetrical to each other. So like a circle, I guess. And then cephalation, cephalization is considered an evolutionary trend where nervous tissue or generations, over generations, become concentrated in one end of an organism. <laughs> um, next is tissue. Um, a body plan is a set of de de developmental traits in a living animal. Animal mm -hmm. body plans also vary according to the organization of the animal's tissue. Uh, true tissues are collections of specialized cells isolated from other tissue by membrane layers. And germ layers are concentric layers which include ectoderm and endoderm. The germ layers form various tissue and organs of the body. Uh, so next is pro protostome and the pterostome. Um, so they're basically developmental modes that can be distinguished by cleavage, column, and column formation, and blastopore. Um, column is a body cavity which is lined by tissue derived only from mesoderm. Um, blastopore is the opening of an archaean pteron that typically develops into the mouth. It, into the mouth and protostomes. So yeah. That's her section. Now it's our section which is 32.4 and 32.4 is basically just talking about zoologists and uh, they recognize that there are three dozen animal phyla and then they have like debates on why this happened like why there are like so many different animal phyla. One hypothesis is because the animal phyla is based on ma mainly on morphological and developmental comparisons. Other another hypothesis is based mainly on molecular data. Uh, morphological and molecular trees agree on members of major features. One animal, all animals share a common ancestor. Two sponges are basal animals. Three elthos. So, uh, is a clade of animals with two tissues. Uh, most animals belong to clade bilateral. And five uh, chordates and some other phyla belong to the clade Deuterostomia. Okay, so that is it for chapter 32. And I hope you guys liked it. Thanks for watching, guys. You're awesome. Woohoo! Woohoo!